The term train wreck feels appropriate when discussing Michigan Report from Hell, one you can't help but look at. The PS2 saw many mid to low budget titles of different genres and scopes. Michigan is one of them. The idea of being a cameraman recording news reports on horror events is an interesting one. While this leads to minimal gameplay, it's everything else that makes Michigan such a fascinating title. It has some of the most over the top, cheesy voice acting around. There's one character in particular who's one of the most perplexing, fascinating characters I've come across in the game. She always looked her best when she was smiling. Pamela, Pamela, God damn it! There's plenty here to piece together, yet much remains open-ended. Some due to the game itself, and some due to spotty localization. What you end up with is a game that's a glorious train wreck. One I had a blast going through. Michigan Report is a title you may have heard of before or seen clips of, for good reason. There's nothing quite like it. Oh well, that monster's in heaven. I mean, hell. That was amazing. I could get used to this feeling. A few things to note about Michigan Report from Hell. This is a Grasshopper manufacturer title, Suda51's game studio. He didn't have much involvement with the title. He came out with the initial concept and served as a producer. He was busy working on Killer7 during this time. In Michigan Report from Hell, we play the cameraman as part of a news crew. We work for Zaka TV. Depending on how we play, we'll have a different name and appearance that's revealed in the ending. We're always shooting. Standing stationary has a bit of camera sway. Running will have that choppy field. Nothing that leads to motion sickness, at least for me. With us out in the field as our reporter and our boom operator, we're shooting scoops of what's happening out in these streets of Chicago. Why is it called Michigan Report from Hell? The Michigan is in reference to Lake Michigan. A strange fog now covers the city. I know what you're thinking. Lakes plus fog equals Silent Hill influence. Eh, no. Not exactly. It's about where it stops. The fog is creating monsters. Humans are turning into them. Through the... <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Run! Get away from here! Come on! Wait, let's get back to the news van! We go through levels gathering footage for on-air broadcasting. We'll find many objects along the way to examine. We'll tag them for more info or get the reporter to look at them. For example, the reporter will pick up keys or open doors. We can't do that ourselves. Depending on how and what we shoot, we'll get three different types of points. Scoop, erotic, and immoral. You'll get scoop points for finding useful clues or doing a good job for shooting a live report, having the reporter in frame like a proper news broadcast. For erotic points, you have to get a bit dirty. You might come across some porno mags in your excursions. I love the sound cue for these erotic objects. Oh man, look at that. I don't think that's going to help right now. You've got a dirty mind, don't you? The final kind of points are immoral points. You earn these by shooting objects like corpses. Another source comes from whether to stop shooting. These pop up about a handful of times throughout the game. Hit the triangle button to step in and help, else let it play out. They are a bit awkward, as you'll have a loading screen show up upon helping, breaking that flow. They make it out to be this big gameplay hook in the game's opening cutscene, but there's not much to it. It doesn't add much to the already bare bones gameplay. One of the few actions we could do beyond shooting is ramming. It's rare that you need to use it, like ramming an object to open up to see its contents, or ramming a reporter out of the way from danger. Of course, the more optional uses are more enjoyable. If you're not on air or in conversation, you could ram your reporter and boom operator to your heart's content for some good laughs. Ouch! You're such a jerk! Yikes! Oh! What the hell are you doing? Huh? Just my imagination? Idiot! Hey, what was that for? 
There's one point where we walk across narrow platforms. It's unfortunate you can't ram them off to their death. I sure did try. Ah! There are a few combat encounters throughout. Monsters will attack us. You target them with your camera, which will get the reporter to shoot them with their gun in tow. Get, get it! Not bad, huh? Yeah, baby! You did it! In a way, it's somewhat like the game Lifeline, although that was with voice commands. That's about it when it comes to the gameplay of Michigan Report from Hell. Different, if minimal, and nothing too exciting. It's who we're with on our excursions that makes it such an amazing train wreck. Let's go through the various reporters who could join us along the way. Pamela Martell serves as the initial reporter during the tutorial. She doesn't last long before she dies. Useless idiot! I've had it! Working with losers hey, like you two! Behind you! I'm joining up with some other team! Ah! What? Just keep quiet! Behind you! There's a. M -m 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 uh! And stop thinking you can order me Monster! around! That said, her death looms large throughout. One is a recurring monster, another in how her death impacts our boom operator. More on that in a bit. The reporter who joins after Pamela's death is Anne Anderson. She is no-nonsense, with a reputation as a bit of a nice queen. She wants you to film no matter what. We're a news team, aren't we? We've got to be prepared for things like this. This woman's got lice in her veins. Unbelievable. You two call yourself Zaka TV crew? I would hardly even call you men. Depending on how you play, she may be the only reporter you have for the rest of the game. For a good stretch while playing, I kept thinking about where I heard her voice from before. You know that anticipation of finding out who it is? Where you recognize a voice but you can't put a finger on it? This one took me by surprise. This voice actress has been another title known for its voice acting. Yes, she's the OG Rebecca Chambers from the first Resident Evil. I'm Rebecca, Rebecca Chambers. I'm a newcomer. I just joined the Stars Bravo team last month. Well, I'm really sorry. Are you all right? But these days, Club Gochi is a popular night spot with the hip young crowd. Carly Reese is another possible reporter. She's the most compassionate and caring of the reporters. We've all lost so many things. Chicago is in a horrible state of tragedy. We're here at St. Matthew's Church, but we've all but given up hope. Zaka TV viewers, this may be my last report. Carly Reese signing off. Justine Rhodes may be a reporter during our playthrough. We'll come across her regardless of how we play, finding her tied up to a pool table in the senior home, a source for erotic points. Hey, cameraman, do you like this kind of stuff? You pervert! <laughs> Paula Orton is the youngest reporter, one who isn't the best with her words and needs some more practice. Our news team went to, um, Club Gochi and met with, um, Dr. O'Connor, a biotech researcher. But there's something off about her. There's one level where we take a break in the hotel. What she says in her sleep is concerning. Uh, God damn it. I'm gonna kill you. Uh, ah. The last reporter that's possible is Mark Bockwinkle. He's an older, more experienced reporter. Good evening, viewers. This is Mark Bockwinkle. We're here at the Great Tezu Airport in an attempt to evacuate Chicago. As you can see, the airport, just like everything else, is blanketed by thick fog. Visibility is practically zero. Will the military transport be able to come? For now, let's move on to the control room. Nina is an outlier. She doesn't serve as a reporter, but she also works for Zaka TV. We team up with her in only one level. We're not shooting footage with her, but holding up in a cabin. All right, you did it! Ah, that's nothing compared to that bear I killed one time. 
Depending on how you play, your playthrough may have an assortment of reporters. Play well and you only have Pamela and Anne as the reporters. Reporters can die in combat encounters or in various scenarios. When they die, the level ends. Depending on what level you're on, you may skip ahead several. With that, you get another reporter. For example, Mark can only be a reporter during the final level. He's only accessible if all the other reporters have died along the way. This does give incentive for replayability, although it's not like the game differs to a great degree. The gameplay sure isn't a driver for it. The reports are more or less the same with a bit of dialogue change depending who's the reporter. With the power of emulation, I was able to access a level select debug screen. This made it easier to jump around levels with different reports. Reporters. I also made use of save states to jump between past reporters living or dying. This game only offers one save slot. To those who went through the game trying to 100% the old fashioned way, kudos to you for putting up with the repetition. Some of you may have noticed the surnames of the reporters. Martel, Anderson, Bockwinkle, Rhodes. Sorry, let's try that with a lisp. Rhodes. Orton. More or less every reporter, person, or location we come across is a reference to a wrestler. There's a director that goes by Mr. Henning, the Von Erich Library, the Gagne Virus, the Chief of Zaka TV is Deborah Flair. And as you've noticed, the voice acting is quite hammy. That's so much to the charm and fun of Michigan Report. But there's one character in particular that makes Michigan Report such a wonderful train wreck. The one who ties everything together. Without them, Michigan Report is more or less a rather unnoteworthy game. I'm talking about Jean-Philippe Briscoe. Now, listen here, Chief! The boom operator who is out with us in the field along with our reporter. Of all the oddball game characters out there, he's near the top. I love him, I hate him, I'm perplexed and amused by him. He's one fascinating individual. One element is this intense, passionate, undying love for Pamela, the first reporter. As mentioned, she has a little screen time before getting killed, but his undying love for her remains, a love he never told her about. Pamela was a fine reporter and a brave one. She threw herself into her work. Yeah. Pamela was pretty brave, wasn't she? I, I loved her! I was crazy about Pamela! Why is she up to... Damn it! I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye! I haven't seen a man logging this much for a woman named Pamela since Borat. While these words were never spoken to her, she does serve as his muse. We can't come across his diary, where we can read one of his poems about Pamela. <clears throat> Let's get in the proper mood for this one. Oh, your beautiful eyes. I could meld into them, just like the cheese. On a deluxe burger. Oh, Pamela. Lovely Pamela. How very, very you are. Pamela. I'll never forget you. I loved you, loved you with all my heart. Like cappuccino at dawn, like hot dogs from a street vendor, like dragon roll sushi. That's how much I loved you, my love. Pamela, a true wordsmith. Then we have his reaction to the reporter's deaths, screaming their names followed by an oh my god. It cracks me up every single time. God bless this voice actor for going all out for it. <laughs> There's also moments where we come across other co-workers' deaths where he shrugs it off. Guess he only really cares about the reporters. God, it's a shame when a co-worker dies. No matter who it is. But I guess we'd better be going. Biggest scoop of my life. Christian! Christian, wake up! No! You can't die! He's already dead. Let's go! If there's one moment you've likely seen of Michigan Report, it's this one with his delayed reaction scream. <coughs> what was a dead body doing in there? Hey you, you better be getting this on tape. 
He's also a bit of an art critic. Art is expression. Expression, I say. Huh. A kid could paint a picture like that. Huh. What did they put this painting up for? One of the funnier optional moments is filming him in the shower during the cabin level and how he feels about it afterwards. Yikes! What the hell? Are you filming me? Stop it! Stop! I can't believe you filmed me naked! I had no idea that's what you were into. But listen to me. Your personal tastes are your own affair. They're none of my business. Land of the free and all. You have your own lifestyle, and I respect that. He's very expressive with his body language while talking. There's no one quite like Briscoe. He's the key reason why Michigan Report works. Pamela. Mm. Oh. <laughs> You're such a naughty girl. <laughs> mm. oh. I found an interesting connection that helps explain the voice work. As mentioned, the voice actress for Anne Anderson is the same voice actress for Rebecca in the original Resident Evil. She's also the voice director on that Resident Evil. Do you know who is the voice director on Michigan Report? She was. God bless this woman in her voice direction. I did check out the Japanese version of Michigan Report, and it's more straightforward. Hemming it up works so well here. Part of the game's train wreck is due to the western localization. While it never got a US release, it did so in PAL regions. Something that Suda51 wasn't aware of until a few years after the game came out. So I've covered several notable moments with Briscoe and our reporters. Let's go through some of the many oddities throughout Michigan Report. Some levels are quick affairs. Small environments, a bit of investigative work, and then on to the next. Then you have levels with long stretches of dialogue. Some for exposition, others seem to stretch out the playtime. Like an early level where we hear a woman in distress. Briscoe and Anne don't seem to be in any rush to get to her. But there are monsters! Don't worry. We're bringing a gun. I can't take it anymore. Do something for me. Tell my mom and my dad I love them. You're going to be fine. You hear me? What's your name? Becky Wands. That's a nice name. Yes. It's a very nice name. I'm Ann Anderson. This is one of those moments where we could hit triangle to put down our camera and help her. Showing that Ice Queen personality of hers, Ann isn't too fond of us helping her. What's the matter with you two? What did you stop shooting for? I can't believe you. There isn't anything left here to shoot. Everybody's dead. And it's too late to save Becky. What are you talking about? Didn't you see what happened just now? It's a huge scoop. There's a lot of the story that remains vague about what happened. There's a plane crash over Lake Michigan in which the virus spread afterward. There's a long exposition dump from a doctor about what the fog is and why it's turning people into monsters. Zaka TV where we work is part of a larger conglomerate, Zaka Group. In cooperation with the military and government, they've created a virus as a weapon. So we're into Resident Evil territory here with biological weapons. The man who created the virus that turns people into monsters is now just about to turn into a monster himself. Why did this man ever create such a virus? And why is he allowing that virus to overpower his own body now? Getting to this point in the story has one of the more comical segues I've come across. Before meeting this doctor, the area is pitch black. We need to get an infrared unit for our camera to see. Briscoe suggests going to a nearby junk shop to see if they have any infrared units. Lo and behold, this junk shop is carrying infrared units or cameras. What a bizarre coincidence. What an odd thing for a junk shop to carry. Between levels, we'll get a black screen, some text, and some voiceover for transition between levels. Obvious signs of being on a budget. It does help with the possible variations of reporters that could be present for that level. There's this one phone call we get that a reporter puts on speaker. They're able to understand, but to us, they sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Okay. I see. 
All right, I see. In that case, we'll come get you. Where are you? Okay? Yes, I've got it. What else do we have beyond these monsters? Various paranormal activities. Why? Who knows? Huh? Oh, must be imagining things. Throughout the game, we could find notes between two individuals, D and M. They know more about what's going on, but they're still plenty kept vague. Who are they? Is this a reference to their first letter of their first name or last? Something else altogether? Another one, the many mysteries. Which is something I dig about Michigan Report. We don't receive everything in one convenient package, despite large exposition dumps at points. There are videotapes that we could find that show more cryptic clips. By sheer luck, a YouTuber a few months back extracted all the cutscenes in high quality. This includes the four bonus scenes. Bless your timing. Of the four clips, two of them are quite noteworthy. Remember when I said something felt off about Paula? These confirm it. How should I know about some connection between the government and Zaka group? <laughs> An affair between Roy Sanders and Deborah Flair? Uh, I don't even know who that guy is. How could I possibly say anything about it? Stage performances. Oh, what are you talking about? Of course not. Uh, the information about the new bioweapons was all true. Oh, damn. <laughs> But let's go through the rest of the game and the ending. Heading to the airport, we come across this perplexing man, the one I started the video with. He's one of those that's been experimented on in regards to the virus. He brings up the doctor we talked to earlier. And boy oh boy does he go over the top with his voice acting. Look! Over there! Do you see that? Come on! I'll race you! In the final stretch, our reporter waits behind while we ascend a lighthouse to give a signal to an incoming plane for evac. We make our way up with Briscoe, but we're in for a surprise. And roll credits. Depending on our score, we'll get different endings. I like the changes in our appearance and name, like how the ending with high erotic score has our cameraman with a more perverted look. Hey, hey, what do you think about those sexy close-ups I shot? <laughs> Bet that'll give the ratings a real shot in the arm. <laughs> Four different endings. In three of them, someone off screen shoots us before we reveal the truth of who is behind what happened. But the real horror is just about to begin. All of you watching this right now, I firmly believe you have the right to know the truth. That's. In the ending with high immoral score, it seems we take credit for everything. Look closely. It's me. It's me, see? I've said this for several games I've covered on this channel, but there's nothing quite like Michigan Report from Hell, for several reasons. It's something Suda51 felt that they didn't have the experience for at the time, the idea that they'd want to revisit again, but how it stands is very much lightning in a bottle. Pulling off this kind of hammy voice acting is next to non-existent in this day and age. It's very much a lower budget title of the PS2 era, one that tried different things. Some experimentation could lead to amazing results, some lead to something amazing buried underneath layers of junk. I don't want to say it's one of those so bad it's good titles. It's more a case of mishmash of ideas and approaches colliding with one another, a train wreck that you can't help yourself and look at. Yes, there are good stretches where there's not much of note, 
Some of the exposition dumps could have been spread over several conversations or chopped down, but when you have bits where Briscoe takes the spotlight or things are hammed up beyond belief, there's nothing quite like it. You get sucked into this intriguing, bizarre world of oddballs and oddities. One in which I was happy to make a trip through. Do I recommend you taking the trip? I like to think this video does a good job of covering most of the highlights, but if you want to check it out for yourself, you have to be ready to get on the game's wavelength. Enjoy it for what it is, because you sure won't forget it anytime soon. Thanks for watching. Alright, man! This is great! Not the usual boring work today! It's a secret photo shoot! Wow! Come to think of it, it's already been five years since I started doing this kind of work! I'm all standing behind the camera, holding up my mic, seeing that here and there! A big fire over here, a big heist over there! I take my life into my hand and jump into all kinds of dangerous situations. Sometimes I barely escape by the skin of my teeth. But does my pay ever go up?